Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be another video in eyeshadow palette month. We're gonna be talking about eyeshadow palette that surprised me. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Yes, we are still in the midst of doing eyeshadow palette month. And today I have a video for you where I would like to just either rave or rant about some eyeshadow palettes that surprised me because sometimes you buy a palette and you have really high expectations and it doesn't quite deliver what you'd hoped and sometimes you buy an eyeshadow palette and it's just beyond the expectations that you actually had. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today's video. But before we get into it and you're unfamiliar with my content, then hi, my name is Maika, I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool neutral undertone and this greatly influences how makeup looks on me and therefore I come from the perspective of that's just a little bit different than most people you could say in the makeup sphere. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade and I love my eyeshadow palettes, which is why we're doing this eyeshadow palette month every single year. Um, but I talk about eyeshadow palettes on a regular basis. I also love Isis and Catrice. I love getting the use out of my makeup. So if you're here for that, then I hope you like to stay tuned for more and subscribe to the channel. So yes, eyeshadow palettes that surprise me. On the one hand, eyeshadow palettes that exceeded my expectations, but also eyeshadow palettes that didn't quite work for me the way I had hoped. Of course, if I mention any of these palettes and they happen to be your favorite, just know makeup is incredibly subjective. Just because something didn't quite work for me or because I love it doesn't necessarily mean that it won't work for you or that it's bad makeup or anything like that. I definitely think that that goes into it as well. Maybe you love these even though I didn't, but I hope I'm, I can tell you a little bit about why I do or didn't quite love these as much as I had expected. Let's start with the exceeded my expectations first. So first up is the Aether Beauty. Um, this is, I believe, the called the Moonlight Crystal Palette. Now this is one you can no longer buy because Aether Beauty um, actually announced last spring that they were gonna go out of business. So this this brand is no longer around, which is, which is a shame because I had just gotten around to trying these after buying them last year and now they're gone. So I will never be able to try another product from them. I was really happy that I was able to try two of their palettes. I bought both the Rose Quartz as well as this Moonlight Crystal one. And I think this was on like 40% sale or something like that for Independence Day that year. And I thought I was going to love the Rose Quartz because that's the neutrally toned one with a lot of really pretty cool tones. These are infused with like a crystal-like shimmering formula. So there's always a little bit of shimmer in all of these. They don't really do any mattes. And I love a blue, green, purple because that's just the kind of colors I like to wear the most. But this, I was thinking, mm, I'm not entirely sure about this one, um, but because it was a better deal for me to get this from their website, like the two palettes together, that's the only reason why I threw this one in my basket, hoping for the best. So I didn't really go into it with a lot of expectations. And then this one ended up being my favorite of the two because this eyeshadow palette just has, you know, it has that really subtle amount of color. It's, it's colorful, but it's not the kind of color where it goes like boom kapow in your face color, which I know a lot of other creators seem to enjoy, but I like things that are a little bit more subtle, something like what I'm wearing today. I'm not wearing this eyeshadow palette today. I'm wearing a single actually, which I'll, I've shown you in another video by now. Um, but yeah, I just did a little bit of a teal colored liner and this eyeshadow palette is perfect for something like that as well, where you can just use these colors either as a full on palette because we get enough shades to anchor it all together. And I really enjoyed the formula and working with it. So this one definitely surprised me. I just kind of threw this into the basket because it was so affordable in that sale thinking nothing of it. And then I tried it and it was my favorite of the two. A new to me brand that I discovered at the end of 2022 was Gloss Gods. I had heard of the brand Gloss Gods before, but I hadn't tried them quite yet. And then I went onto their website and I spotted this new Neutrals Remix palette. And there's a reason why I decided to put this in the giveaway this month. So if you haven't entered yet, make sure you find the, the giveaway form. I'll make sure to link you to the video where I announced the giveaway if you haven't entered yet. Um, and this new neutrals palette just blew my socks off once I started trying it. And I now have several Gloss Gods palettes because I just love the formula so much. 
a really nice row of like cooler green tone neutrals and then we have these warmer tones here and then some really good lighter neutrals but you can just see how this one reflects green in the mirror and that's because this and this um, like they all have a bit of a flip to them. They're not full on multi-chromes, like the flips aren't super strong and noticeable, but these are incredibly pretty, really good shimmer formula, great blendable mattes. And I love how in a 12 pan, we only have five mattes and everything else is shimmer. So this thing just blew my socks off the minute I tried it. And this was a brand I had never tried before. So I went in with zero expectations. I had not tried this brand before. I didn't know anything about their formula. And now that I've tried them, I, I, I want more of their palettes for sure. That new color of rain palette. It's an old shimmer blue palette, but I also have their dancing in the sky palette, which is an old shimmer green palette. And that was just as lovely as well. So I think I want to add the blue one to my collection too. In recent months, you've seen me try a lot of K-Beauty eyeshadow palettes and my top ranked eyeshadow palette is this one from Romand. This is the uh, Dreamy Lilac Garden from, I think it was a limited edition collection, so I'm not sure if you can still get it. But this has uh, three shimmers, everything else is matte. We get some rosy tones in here, we get some neutrals that are neutral enough for me to be able to get away with it, but they are a little bit on the warmer side, I would say. They have this rosy, warmer undertone, you could say, but very, very stunning, really easy for that wash of color over, over the lid. I've been loving these palettes in the summertime, especially for just that really easy eye, a bit of uh, mascara on the top lashes and a brighter thing on the lip. And this has been stunning. Whereas I had tried some K-Beauty in the past and wasn't always overly impressed because with K-Beauty, because it is a sheer formula, it's meant to be that wash of color. I was just not... <sighs> I was just not always a fan of it, but now that I've tried some actually good formulations, I'm like, yes, this is what I want. And uh, I would like to try some more from Romand. So especially Romand, because I had never tried the brand before uh, this year, actually, I am very impressed with their lip products are really stunning and they do some really good eyeshadows as well. The next palette is actually one I didn't purchase myself because I just knew that this isn't my preference in terms of a color story. I love my cool tone neutrals. So when Melt came out with the Gemini 2, which is a really good companion palette to the original Gemini, I think, but it's so warm toned. It's all these like warm, rosy pinks. And the really, the only thing that really attracted me to this palette were these greens here. But this entire first half, I was like, ah, and Melt palettes can be expensive. But then one of my lovely subscribers offered to send me this because they had a double and I was like, sure, then I can try it. And then I put it in my, uh, my eyeshadow to try a pile, tried it out and I love this. It's such a good spring grungy palette, which I had not expected because these are not my shades per se. I don't love pinks on my eyes because with my skin tone, it can just look like I've got pink eye way, way, way too quickly. So I don't enjoy pink eyeshadow usually. So I was a little bit scared going into this one, thinking that's not gonna work for me. I'm not gonna love it, but I ended up loving it a lot. It is the same wonderful formula that I know Melt can already do. So yeah, I just, this just reminded me why I love Melt so much and I'm really glad I now have this palette. And then finally in my, I really love this and I hadn't expected it category, I have to share with you my favorite palette of 2022 again. This is the Catrice Fall in Colors eyeshadow palette. And I picked this up so randomly from my drugstore. I saw it in the little uh, limited edition display and I was like, yeah, I could give that a whirl. It looks like something that I might like. But here's the thing, with Catrice, you just never know what you're gonna get because sometimes you get the good Catrice formula and sometimes you get the bad Catrice formula. And this I can report is the good Catrice formula. I've mentioned in the past how impressed I was with this. I even managed to find one for one of you and put it in a giveaway last year because I loved it so much. I was like, 
I have to share the love on this one. <laughs> so that's exactly what I did. It's a really stunning, really buttery smooth formula, great shimmers. The color story is really lovely because that orange in the middle kind of throws you off and it makes you look like it's going to be a very, very warm toned color story but it's like the perfect neutral color story with a bit of cool tones, a bit of warmth, a bit of the rosiness. It's just a really good mix of almost everything. And it doesn't necessarily scream fall, but you can go very neutral with this. You can go very glam with this. You can go very smoky with this. You can go grungy with this. It just has so many options and it's super versatile. And for how, for how affordable this was, it was only 15 euros at the drugstore. I was very impressed and this definitely beats some of my more high-end eyeshadow palettes. It just does. So now we're moving on to the five palettes that I wasn't very impressed with when I tried them. These are the ones where I was like, mm, I had expected just a little bit more for several reasons as we'll discuss as we go over these. And so the first palette that I felt a little bit disappointed by is Viseart's Cool Petite Cool Mattes. That's the full name of it. Name of it. And you need to know, I love me some Viseart. I adore Viseart. If I were to select my five favorite um, eyeshadow palette formulas, then Viseart is definitely going to be in that top five. So I was hoping to really love it. So I did a full roundup of some Viseart palettes that I had tried last April, and this was the least favorite out of all of the things I tried at the time. And the reason why I was so disappointed with this is because even though the color story is like really nicely cool toned and it goes from like lighter to darker. So I really had high hopes that this was going to look stunning on me. Sadly, everything pulled gray. The blues pulled gray, the, the purples pulled gray, and there was hardly any distinction once these went onto the eye between the actual grain tones we get in here and some of those blues and purples, which I just thought kind of defeated the point for me. So this, I think I can definitely still like pull in these shades with some other palettes, but I had kind of bought this to have like my ultimate cool tone matte color story that I can, for instance, take with me traveling and then just take like a liquid eyeshadow or like a little single and just let that be that. And this just didn't hit the mark for me. And it's just because the undertones once on the eyes didn't pull the way I had expected from looking at them in the pan. So these shadows didn't translate well to my lids at all. And I want a palette that where I see the color in the pan, that that's also what I get on my eyes. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person who feels that way. So that's why the Viseart Petite Cool Mattes wasn't quite successful for me, even though I love Viseart as a formula and I really enjoy the brand. A brand that was new to me this year that I had never tried before was Vive Cosmetics. Now, Jamie Genevieve had launched her uh, makeup collection a few years ago, and a lot of people were raving about it. And I do watch some of her vlogs sometimes, and she is known for doing full glam, really intense makeup. So I was expecting just based of what I've seen from her, that her eyeshadow palette was gonna give me the same vibe. When she launched the 90s palette, I instantly knew that it was going to be cool toned heaven and I just wanted to try it. So this color story is really, really beautiful. But there are two things that I didn't love about it. Some of these mattes pull darker once on the lid than what they do, what they look like in the pan. So something like this is going to pull a lot darker than you might expect, which I wasn't a big fan of. And then we do get only one, two, three shimmers in here. And their shimmers are very, very lacking. They are very subtle. They're difficult to pick up with a brush. And I, you really need fingers or like you need to wet them to really get any sort of shiny payoff, which is just something I wouldn't have expected from a brand that is so much into like the full glam makeup as this brand is, because I, I would have expected there to be a really strong metallic in here, and there just isn't. There, there are some really stunning undertones in here. I really enjoyed this shade here. That's a really good neutral shade. Um, it's got some really lovely shades in here, but as I mentioned, it just pulled a little bit darker than I had expected, 
And because of the shimmers not being very impactful, I felt that for me, it lacked in contrast, making every look look very similarly once I put them on the eyes, which is again, not what I'm looking for. So I'm not entirely sure if I wanna try more from Vive Cosmetics. Let me know in a comment down below if you've tried more from the brand and let me know what you really like. I know they're very much known for like doing lip liners and stuff, but I don't do lip liner because my lips don't necessarily need it. And my top lip is much smaller than my bottom lip. And if I overline my top lip, it looks very, very strange because my lips are also quite pouty. So I can't really overdraw any lip, like lip line. It just looks very, very strange because the dimension of my lips is then completely off. So that's why um, I haven't tried anything else from them yet. Um, but this wasn't wholly successful either. A palette that launched this year was the Shroud Cosmetics Moonfall palette. And Shroud is a brand whose formula I really, really adore. They do some really punchy color stories. I love their Creepy Cute. I love their Arcana palette. Um, I like their collab with Betty Bean, the first one. Uh, the second one I didn't buy because that color story wasn't really up my street. And then they announced this and I was like, I need to have that. This is what it looks like. And I was stoked for this. I was so happy to try it. Is it good formula? Yes. Are these really impactful shimmers? Yes. Is it a full round of color story that will let you do a lot of different looks? No. And that's the only downside to this one here. So I really enjoy this with, uh, if I just stick to shades that look very similar in their undertone. So if I stick to like the tealy blues, I get a look. If I stick to like the purpley cranberry shades, I get a look there. And if I stick to, to this green with this golden shimmer, I'm safe. The minute I try to mix and match between those colors, things look very, very muddy very, very quickly. And there's just something with Shroud and I felt the same way about the first Betty Bean collab. What's it called again? It's freaking bats. Um, when they did that as well, I felt similarly where not all of the undertones in the palette necessarily go together to create looks between the different colors. And that's just something I want from a palette. That doesn't mean that this isn't a stunning palette at all. Um, but I tried the Fantasy Cosmetica Rogue palette in the same month as I was trying this one out. out and that one was far more successful for me in terms of like all of the shimmers going together with all of the different mattes. And here I feel that's just not the case. I would never put this blue matte with, or this blue shimmer with that like cranberry pink sort of matte. I just wouldn't, not enticed to do it. Very different undertone and that leads to muddiness. So I just wish there was a little bit more thought in how like put into how the shades combine. You can still do multiple looks with this as long as you stick to those general color stories and then you're good. Um, so you can still, within the nine pan, you can do three or four, maybe five stunning looks, but that's about it. And I want to be able to mix and match all of my shades all the time because I'm just not someone who combines eyeshadow palettes together, but with Shroud, I have found that if you do that, you do get a lot more use out of your palette. So this together with the It's Freaking Bats or the Arcana, I think is going to be really stunning, but I don't feel you need to be forced to purchase more than one palette from a brand to get multiple looks. I, w I wish it was just, we could just stick to one. Then the Adept Minka palette. So this is a brand again that I had tried before in the past. I bought the Ninhydrin and the Plain Jane Remastered, I think about a year before this one came out. And the minute I saw this on their Instagram, I was like, right, this is right up my street. We get two mattes, everything else is shimmer, save for these two, everything has like a cooler undertone. This is gonna be my dream shimmer, cool tone palette. It's not. <laughs> and it's not to do with the color story. The color story is really, really stunning. However, I do think with Adept, you need to like have a matte palette at the ready because then you can put these like all over the lid and you'll be fine. They are incredibly flaky, creamy shimmers, which I just feel are very difficult to work with, which is the reason why I didn't end up loving this because this is also quite expensive. I think I paid like around the 70 euro mark, including all of the shipping and handling fees for this. And I just feel that it's not worth it in the end. The shimmer formula in here very much reminds me of the experience I had 
using the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 palette that I tried last year. And there I also didn't like the shimmers because they have this really creamy, foily texture that is incredibly difficult to work with if you use brushes. So this as well, you can barely stick a brush into it. You'll just move eyeshadow around, but it doesn't stick to the actual brush. You're gonna have to use fingers and even though I don't mind using a finger to apply shimmer shade at all, I really don't mind it. It means you can be less precise. So I don't mind going in with a finger to intensify a shimmer, but if it's the only way in which I can apply the shadow and then having to go in with a brush to try and blend it out, it doesn't really work with my eye shape and I, ha I don't have a lot of lit space. So that's why this for me wasn't quite successful and it definitely has some limitations because of that. Does it have stunning shades? Is this going to live in my collection for a little while to come? For sure. But with the Ninhydrin and the Plain Jane Remastered, I could use my brushes and I had no issues picking it up. So I think the brand changed their formula between me buying those first two palettes and this one. And if this is the quality that Adept Cosmetics is now going for, I know I won't be repurchasing anything from them anytime soon or repurchasing, I should say purchasing. And because this is just not my favorite formula, I, I want to be able to pick things up with a brush and have the versatility and being able to use a brush for precise placement and doing all that. And that's not what this palette is giving. And then last but not least, the Natasha Denona Retro Glam. So like everybody else, I was incredibly stoked when this was finally, finally announced. Um, the retro, uh, the mini retro, is it called the mini retro? I always miss up the names because we have a retro, we have a glam, we have a mini retro, and we have the retro glam. Be more, be more creative with your naming, uh, Natasha Denona. But yeah, the mini retro with like the, the purpley things and like the sagey greens. I love that thing. And everybody was, of course, hoping and wishing that that palette would be announced for real uh, in like a bigger version. And then they did and everybody loved it. And I tried mine, but it was the fourth midi sized palette from Natasha Denona that I tried. And I love the Natasha Denona eyeshadow quality together with Viseart. It's going to be up there in the top five of like all time favorite eyeshadow formulas for sure. But this color story wise, it wasn't quite it. And this fourth palette, it, it took me four palettes to realize this. It just made me realize that Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette color stories are not necessarily up my street. Loving the quality, love the shades I get in all of the palettes combined, but within the one given palette, I just wasn't feeling very excited for it. So guess what I did? I like rearranging my eyeshadow palettes, so I rearranged all four of my Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes and I filmed it for you, so I'll link you to the video down below in case you want to see. And I changed my Retro Glam into the cool toned color story of my dreams with some greens. This is what my Retro Glam now looks like. I took out all of the purple, all of the pinky shades. Um, and I've dispersed those over other palettes. But yeah, I just really, really enjoy my Natasha Denona palettes a lot more now that I've reorganized them. And I've heard people say like, oh yeah, I didn't mark all of my Natasha Denona singles. So if I ever want to put them back in the original palette, I can. And I'm just like, I don't think I ever want to go back to what this originally was because I've gone back to this and I've used this color story the way it is now. And let me tell you, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm really, really stoked with what I did with my Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes. This now works a lot for me. I'm so glad that these have removable pans. If that's been you as well, if you felt a little bit disappointed with some of your Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes and you have a couple of them, rearrange them and, and get, give them a new lease of life because I think that that way you can get so much more use out of it if it starts working better for you. We should not have to buy more eyeshadow palettes to get what we want if we can rearrange them and make them into something better what we already have. So those were some eyeshadow palettes that surprised me either because they were a pleasant surprise and I ended up liking them a lot more than I had expected 
or because they just didn't deliver what I had hoped based on palettes I had already tried from the brand or because I went into certain expectations with some of these palettes that it just didn't quite live up to. So I really hoped you enjoyed watching today's video. Let me know in a comment down below what were some eyeshadow palettes that were a surprise to you. I would love to know. And then I hope you'd like to stay tuned for more. I've got more coming for you in eyeshadow palette month. So there's more eyeshadow palette content coming your way. So subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated to when I post new videos. For now, take care, have a great day, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye. <music>